Hi everybody, it's DuckVidian07 with another video. Uh, this time uh, I'm uh, playing an old uh, uh, version of uh, Zoo Rhinos. Uh, uh, I previously trophied with this version. I just played some uh, Brazen Borrowers instead of Leyland Bindings. A few other uh, 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 smaller uh, changes to the main and to the sideboard but it's pretty much the same deck as I made video in the past. Uh, this deck got definitely upgraded with Leyland Binding and uh, we are playing all the typical stuff you can see in Rhinos and uh, you can see those stuff in a lot of the zoo decks. Uh, but uh, the thing here is we are playing uh, both uh, Territorial Cowl and Crushing Footfalls as our uh, Cascade payoffs and playing a uh, nine cascades uh nine cascade spells uh, total okay so uh the basic idea for this deck is that uh, it's uh, much more resilient to the post board hate uh territorial uh, uh <clears throat> this deck doesn't have uh, that many great uh two drops it's uh, just uh, fire ice if you don't play scion uh and uh, fire ice is your best uh, uh, to turn uh, turn two uh, spell you can play, but here you have Sino Draco, you have uh, Fire Ice, you have Territorial Cow as your one of your best uh, turn two uh, plays, and even with Territorial Cow you can go suspend Footfalls uh, turn one, uh, turn two Territorial Cow into turn three Shardless Agent, uh, something like that, and uh, those starts can be uh, very aggressive. And uh, one force of negation or fury or binding subtlety, something like that, can be enough to just finish that game. And uh, another thing is this deck just uh, never runs out of gas. You can uh, you can't just uh, draw two of your footfalls and uh, cascade get one footfalls countered, maybe resolve one, and that will be all your footfalls. And uh, you're unable to apply additional pressure and uh, Praise and Borrower and Fury are sometimes just not enough to close the game. This deck uh, uh, never just never runs out of the gas. You can always cascade into Kavu, into Footfalls, uh, Player Scion, Player Fury, uh, Shardless Agents. Uh, so it has uh, far uh, more threats and which can be relevant in some grind matchups, especially game one uh, where you don't have endurance in, in the main and you can't shuffle those Footfalls back in your deck. Uh, so sometimes in regular versions, your cascade spells can be dead, especially versions that play more than uh, newer versions that play more than eight cascade spells. Uh, I find that they can be pretty dead past turn five or six, and uh, so uh, this is not the case in this deck. And the thing uh, thing with this deck uh, is you can really uh, you can really uh, make fun of your opponent's uh, sideboarding plan, as um, as you will see in the gameplay. Uh, often, just uh, uh, people bring in a lot of uh, Chalice of the Voids, Fluster Storms, not knowing that I took out all my crushing footfalls. So maybe I I often leave one footfall in uh, to uh, to just as a uh, to leave it. I just leave one in as an accidental. Uh, good uh, cascade sometimes, and uh, to have more uh, cascade uh, threats uh, which I can cascade into uh, if it becomes relevant if games get grindier. or so. Uh, other stuff we're playing in the deck is just a typical, uh, typical stuff you see in uh, Rhinos is the uh, Fire Eyes, uh, Fury, Leyland Binding, uh, Cascade Spells, and Force of Negation. Uh, so you can uh, you will see and you can expect from this deck that uh, much faster, uh, more dynamic uh, gameplay where you just uh, are fo uh, forced to ditch your uh, outburst agents uh, uh, more often to just ditch them, ditch them to force of negation and fury and uh, just uh, sometimes you have to finish game with your Kahu and Sino Draco and stuff like that. Uh, also uh, you can notice uh, the mana base. It's uh, it's a different meta base. I play uh, three. Tri I play three basics. Uh, Xander in data uh, triumphs, in my opinion, best for uh, this build. 
uh, we have a lot of fetches here and the most important uh, shocks for domain mana base. Uh, this is basically it. Uh, the fetches available are pretty good at uh, finding all your basics, so you have a pretty good chance of uh, fetching early uh, in those Blood Moon matchups. Fetching early for the basics you need the most. Sometimes that's the forest if you have a few outbursts in hand. Uh, sometimes that's uh, Forest Island if you have Shardless. Uh, plus uh, outbursts and uh, sometimes you just need uh, blue mana for your uh, uh, Teferi or something like that. Okay, so uh, this deck will just uh, try to go as quickly as possible to the league, try to make a video as uh, shorter as possible, but still go uh, through the old match, still go through all the matches. Okay, what is this? Okay, uh, uh, I just finished uh, two leagues with this deck. One league uh, I went 4-1, another league was 5-0. And we will just go to the 5-0 league because when I put two, um, put two leagues in one video, it lasts too long. And we'll just make uh, try to make this one a bit uh, shorter. Okay, so uh, my opponent uh, playing first on the Grixis. Uh, going with uh, with the Ledger Shredder, uh, that's uh, that's definitely creature I don't want to see uh, when playing uh, Rhinos. So I'm able to uh, just uh, deal with my deal with opponent's Shredder and uh, decide to force their expressive iteration, just completely uh, uh, completely destroy the. Uh, Beginning plan, they didn't find a turn land, which is great in these situations. I was able to play turn 4, uh, 2 sign of Dracos, attack with my Rhino token. My opponent uh, succeeds to find uh, answer, succeeds to find uh, Totsies, put Totsies in the sideboard with the last uh, last ability from the Dragon Ray Channeler. They found Delirium last moment and uh, survived the turn. Uh, very lucky. From my opponent, uh, so they were able to deal with both Scions, and uh, which turned the game in their favor. But I, uh, I made a mistake here. I was just so happy my opponent decides to fetch on their turn that I forgot to play Scion prior to attack. If I played the Scion prior to attack, my uh, cow would be six six uh, first strike trample, and uh, my opponent. Uh, would be forced to uh, just. Uh, uh, let it through, uh, put themselves on one life, which would be definitely lethal uh, next turn, but still my uh, Scion was good enough to finish this game, uh, although my misplay was pretty horrible. At this point I also found, uh, also found removal, I didn't even have to play it. It's just uh, when you when you mis do one mistake, uh, you most often uh, do another one. Uh, it's just uh, how things works, but uh, it wasn't very relevant because I had a significant um, significant advantage uh, of my opponent, and my opponent also did a mistake by fetching in their turn and um, making themselves uh, unable to uh, grow the uh, grow. Dead Shadow. Okay. Okay, in this version, I don't feel like playing uh, one mana removal for Ragavan is needed because mostly you'll always have a turn two uh, solution for uh, Ragavan. You either play the Cow or Scion or uh, Binding or Fire Ice. So um, I think uh, those spells have been pretty effective so far. Uh, we're dealing uh, to Ragavan. Uh, on this occasion, you can see my opponent uh, countering uh, the Leyline Binding, which was fine enough for me. My opponent went to iteration, uh, find another, uh, <clears throat> find another threat, uh, find another Ragavan. Uh, so I uh, cast my Shadowless Agent. My opponent was forced to. Uh, counter the footfalls or it would uh, end the game and there is all my shardless agent which is enough for to block the Ragwan. 
and uh, so I'm uh, now free for all my Ragavan attacks. So with having uh, two Sino Dracos in my hand, I draw land, so I'm able to play both of them. At this point, uh, uh, my opponent uh, finds a uh, removal for both of them, but I still have two outbursts in hand, and it's pretty, pretty uh, low chances for my opponent uh, dealing with two outbursts at this point. I just find uh, the Rhino tokens because I boarded out, uh, I boarded out uh, or my uh, cows because I'm playing against a. Uh, uh, Death Shadow deck, which is deck that I expect to board uh, the dress down post board and Kao, uh, it's example uh, of a deck where Kao is not good and uh, I decided to go on combat with another footfalls and uh, just uh, I, <clears throat> my opponent tries a desperate attack I block the Ragavan and the Incos and Seed uh, that was it I'll uh, hide the chat and game block so the screen is uh, bigger and uh, okay so I don't know what here it says 1-1-1 one, one, one. Uh, this was a win we'll just go through the matches okay a game against the mana symbol uh, the streamer I think uh, he streams. Uh, he played uh, a four-color omelette pile at uh, this on this occasion. Uh, I kept uh, hand with no uh, no cascade spells, but two territorial cows, which uh, which are good enough strats. Just to, uh, they they can win the game on their own. My opponent uh, gets uh, their uh, is ending encountered, so they play binding, and I go for another cow. Play just play my land. Unfortunately, he had another prismatic ending, so I'm now in a position where my opponent uh, deal with bull threats, and uh, I just uh, my only option here is to play the fire eyes. Leave the one uh, white mana open. I luckily did do it. So I was thinking about the uh, best top deck at this point. Uh, at this uh, uh, time is another Leyland Binding. So I made sure I left the white mana open and I exiled the binding. I got my cowl. I got the loot ability. Unfortunately, just into another um, land. But uh, I had the cowl on field and decided to immediately just put Fury on the field. Uh, to, just as another threat, um, and uh, they go for a draw two with the charm. I decide to save the binding uh, and save the land in my hand at this point uh, to try to lure the land away with Kabul and the whole binding in case I need some. Uh, something uh, to remove something more important and my opponent just goes for uh, exile fury block uh, cowl with, uh, with solitude uh, they plus the they plus the teferi i go uh, for scion prior to the tech phase maybe i should have waited Maybe I should have waited, uh, maybe my opponent would let me do the draw discard. And uh, you can see here, uh, this is this is a really good example of how this deck uh, can uh, trick the opponent. Uh, my, it's, uh, I only have 36 uh, cards in my library, and my opponent uh, still uh, doesn't know that I'm playing Rhinos. Uh, he, 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 my opponent is convinced I'm playing uh, Zoo because he just saw the Kaulus, the Scions, uh, Force of Negation, and some Direction spells. So he doesn't know I'm playing Rhinos and he plays Shellis on 2. I was in a good position. But then my opponent uh, succeeded to get back uh, on life with the solitude attacks, so they had also have Kahira. I drew into Jace, 
and um, luckily I drew into another binding and with zero cards in hand it was a uh, decent they uh, bounced the chalice so they can play the teferi and replay the chalice on two again and I drew into a uh, chalice but my opponent had the top deck teferi uh, so very good top decks uh, from my opponent uh, so jays uh, into teferi uh, into run and uh, I was forced to concede because Shardless can be played into the ferry. Okay, so uh, game two. Game two, if I had the territorial cow, I would suspend the footfalls turn one. But uh, with the uh, sound, it's more important just to play your sound turn two and start. Pressuring your opponent also um, run not relevant enough to use the subtlety on definitely I just uh, I had to save something uh, so I just uh, play a shortless agent into territorial cowl and uh, to be honest I would rather have territorial cowl in this position uh, with this play I was able to suspend uh, uh, to kill the sorry to kill the Teferi uh, with Shardless and uh, suspend uh, one Rhinos and Ardent Plia into another Rhino. So uh, they charmed one of mine Rhinos and I decided uh, that it's best just to get rid of uh, Ren at uh, this point and uh, I went for another Rhinos putting my opponent into position where they forced to uh, they're forced into some bad place and just sacrificing the Jays into the Rhino token and I decided uh, to play around uh, some mass removal, so like Supreme Verdict, I didn't want to cast my cow and uh, after they cast it I went for subtlety I had uh, Plia on the, on the uh, board and I went for the cascade and to make my subtlety 5-4 put my opponent in, on one life uh, make their uh, make their run useless and I didn't want to play another ter uh, territorial cabo so I play around this, another supreme verdict stuff like that and that was the game too okay so game 3 I keep. Uh, I decide to keep this uh, hand because I was on the draw, and uh, my uh, so there's less chance I'll succeed to pressure my opponent uh, with aggressive cards. Uh, so I decide just to keep the interactive hand with no uh, with no creatures, no threats. Unfortunately, my uh, my top decks were not good and I just top decked the land after land uh, luckily had this uh, turn one footfalls on the field I uh, didn't have much options so I just uh, uh, went for the ferry which uh, luckily resolved uh, but I still didn't have uh, anything going on and uh, at uh, this uh, this point, I just uh, wanted to draw the territorial cabo. So I think in these situations, uh, having cabo is uh, can be better than rhinos, especially if you can play it uh, off the cascade end of turn. Okay, so there wasn't a chance I could resolve this uh, rhinos if I bounce it with the fairy. They just recast it, so I just uh, use uh, the fairy on my turn to be able to cast Charles because I left both uh, uh, both uh, the cow and some number of footfalls, and uh, my opponent started to draw some lands. Uh, game three. So, uh, and I kept just drawing uh, more lands. At this point, I only had uh, six lands left in my library from 38 cards, uh, fetches and, uh, 
in the graveyard and uh, in the and in the hand and on the field at this point just five uh, just five cards a uh, five lands sorry uh, unfortunately i i tried to cascade again into cow but i found uh, i found uh, Uh, I didn't find cow, but uh, footfalls, which were countered by the shellis. They bosage bosage into my last land, but uh, uh, luckily they just went at her gust on my shellis, shellis agent, which wasn't a good play uh, by my opponent because I just uh, was able to put shellis on top. I didn't have any more any footfalls in the deck uh, left, so I just. Uh, Okay, so subtlety, uh, subtlety, uh, very good. Uh, top deck at this point, my opponent uh, did have the Jace, so and had the Chalice uh, on the field for my suspended footfall, so chances weren't big for me to win this. But uh, two subtleties uh, and the Shavan Shalas agent on the field pressuring my opponent to do something. Uh, they go again at the Aether Gust on my uh, Shardless Agent, which is fine, I just put it on the top again. It's a fine play for me, it definitely finds me uh, the Territorial Cabo, and I'm able to play uh, two subtleties, end of their turn, in response to Bran. Uh, they counter the first, but I resolve the second one. They decide to put Vren on top, which I think it wasn't the best decision from my opponent, and they bounced the subtlety, so it was even worse decision after that, because uh, I had the subtlety again for their Vren, and I was able to recast the Shardless. Uh, I didn't have any more footfalls in the deck, so Shardless doesn't bother me anymore. All Shardless they put on top just finds me another Kavu. Which is just another example uh, of cow being good in this uh, version. They went for draw two. Uh, at this point, they were kind of low on time. Uh, they went, uh, of course, uh, the fairy, and they knew about my subtlety, so they were holding the counter spell, trying to find uh, something. Uh, uh, trying to find something by uh, by bouncing my cards, but that was just delaying the inevitable, and I uh, top decked the fire eyes uh, to finish them off, and that was the game. So I'm not sure why does it say one 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 here. It was a win for me, but I don't know. It's something uh, wrong with the MTGO. Okay, so that was. Uh, that was a cripple fight, the game three, with uh, matchup uh, with the four color omnet. So I had uh, bad draws. My opponent, I was flooded. My opponent was screwed, and uh, in the middle of the game, we. We were kind of in a similar situation, but uh, the Rhinos and the sh Territorial Kavu, I would say Territorial Kavu prevailed in this position. I was just able to recast, I was able to recast the Shardless Agent so much time and every time finding me Territorial Kavu. And uh, definitely Territorial Kavu was the reason I won this game. It just wouldn't be possible for me to win this game uh, without Kavu and just uh, Rhinos. Um, Unfortunately, my uh, Merktad opponent in this game finds Delirium pretty quickly. They're able to... Uh, they're able to cast uh, the Merktad, making their channeler 1-1 again. And I just attacked for 2. 
I didn't want uh, to, for my opponent to get the delirium. They were low on cards. I just wanted them to force into another bad play just to be able to get delirium. They did waste, uh, had to waste the unholy heat uh, to kill my uh, shadow's agent, which is definitely not a great play. Okay, so I had uh, wasn't in a good situation, but I did find a fury. Unfortunately, my opponent uh, counters the fury, and uh, I uh, that was it. I think I conceded with it until their turn. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, uh, there was no out, uh, Shardless Agent wasn't the out, so that was it. Uh, that was uh, game one against my uh, Merktide opponent. We will now see the game two. Okay, uh, much, much better hand. Uh, I'm able to Territorial Cow to uh, turn two, uh, Shardless uh, Endurance turn three, also Teferi. In the hand, uh, if they play uh, Merktide uh, early, but also uh, a blue card to ditch the force. So unfortunately, I had the bad uh, bad lands in hand, uh, and I was forced to go uh, Foundry uh, Garden, and uh, I, I definitely needed the third land. And I did find it. Uh, my opponent was also struggling with lands. Uh, I uh, I found the land, but I was still missing a uh, second green, which was definitely a problem. But at least I I had the opportunity to play the Shadow's Agent, I played the Fairy, and it was good. So uh, my opponent also found a land on time to be able to. Uh, to be able to counter the first rhinos, but I was able to counter their iteration and just uh, start uh, uh, digging for that uh, second green option or uh, more cascade spells like this one. It was really important for me to find. Uh, To find that green land, or uh, uh, at least I found Shardless, which did make me two uh, Rhino tokens. And I had Binding in hand, so I was happy with them playing the Merktide, but uh, unfortunately they didn't, they had the explosives. And uh, my opponent, weirdly enough, decided to. Uh, decided to just let this damage through, try to hold uh, explosives uh, for for next turn. And I was able to end of turn cast the endurance, uh, remove them from possibility of playing the Merc Tide, of playing Unholy Heat. And they just went uh, Shredder. And uh, Blood Moon, I think, and I uh, just uh, had little on the board with the Leyland Binding on Shredder, and uh, that was a uh, game two for me. My opponent concedes. Okay, so game three. Just have to be uh, really careful about my opponent's. Uh, just a second. As you can see he, here, I uh, decided to board out all the cows in this matchup uh, because uh, my opponent uh, plays dress down on the sideboard and uh, most often, and they most often bring it in. So a uh, cow uh, is not the greatest in that matchup, and uh, I dis in th on this occasion I decided to put all of them out, but sometimes I also leave a few of them in as dress down is just a two mana. Removal and you just have to be careful that you don't play multiple cows to not get uh, 
really blown out. If you if your opponent just played two mana removal on your cow, it's uh, fine. It's not uh, that of a big deal. So game three, I think uh, I was in a pretty decent position. Had a good hand here. A uh, lot of uh, interaction, two cascade spells. I decided to just uh, fetch my basics. Uh, it's easy uh, fetching the basics. Uh, with Alexander Lounge, you just go Forest Plains, have full domain on turn 3, able to play your sound with uh, Dispute Protection. Also have Force on their turn, plus uh, the Cascade Spell on my turn, plus Leyland Binding. I think this is just uh, working great. I did uh, spend a lot of my resources here, but uh, I gained uh, pretty, pretty significant advantage with uh, on my board, attacking them for 5, uh, putting 2 Rhino tokens on the field, uh, with uh, still having a good hand and um, just uh, forcing my opponent into some uh, bad plays and they did find regent but i had the binding plus the fire eyes to tap it and that was it okay so sorry uh, that was game three i think yeah it was the game i think it was the game three We'll go now to match 4. I keep awkward hand, no red mana, but decide to risk it uh, anyways. I play 23 lands. I play some uh, card draw. I did find uh, Fire Ice. Uh, Fire Ice is pretty good in these situations. Uh, Taking you closer to the land you need, which I did find thanks to it, and uh, I'm able to steal my opponent's turn and also uh, grab my land. And my opponent goes for uh, Blood Moon at this point, and I decide not to go for the basic but to go immediately for the outburst in response. Uh, I was uh, hoping for the Rhinos at this position because they have Blood Moon going on, but uh, Territorial Cover was just fine. I was able to loot some cards, uh, get closer to the stuff I need, and I was able just to discard those cards. I'm not able to play with Moon on field, and uh, after that, uh, kill all the stuff with uh, Fury, Rizzle, my suspended Rhinos. Again, discard uh, cards I don't need, find cards I, I need, and uh, luckily I find the force to uh, counter there. To counter there, that's it. So I, my fury stays in my hand, and I was able to kill their fury. And it was just a battle of furies at this point. So I found another basic. Uh, not I needed a forest, uh, but the plains is pretty decent. It just uh, makes uh, my cow tree tree, makes the uh, casting of scion easier. And uh, cow loots me into another scion, and my opponent I will have a lethal next turn. Uh, so uh, that was it. I uh, won the game one. These are all, uh, all of these are best decks in format. My opponent unfortunately goes tiers 1, uh, turn 1 touches. Uh, I reveal my Echo Cell Ambusher, so there wasn't uh, any chance of surprising my opponent with it, but uh, they still have to attack on us at some point, and I will definitely play that one for free. They also had uh, grief on turn three, so a lot of discard uh, going on here. Uh, my opponent also goes the doughty sack immediately, and uh, putting uh, two good uh, threats on the field, uh, and fire eyes not killing either of those. 
I was just uh, forced to go ice on the fury, my own fury, let the damage through, try to find uh, something like uh, silence or cowls uh, which can uh, block uh, those creatures. But I just had uh, Kasali at this point and nothing, nothing good. And I boarded out two for. Uh, Two force of uh, negations, but only to draw, uh, just to draw both of them. Uh, so uh, that was it. Uh, I conceded turn after. Too much uh, discard and uh, not as good draws as last game. Okay, definitely keeping the hand with four, two basics and two uh, cascade spells. Unfortunately, my opponent uh, discarded both of those spells by turn three, uh, and uh, making the which is definitely making this game a lot uh, longer than I wanted to, but couldn't do anything about it. Uh, luckily, draw into Kavu, so uh, without uh, Kavu in my deck, uh, uh, the number of threats I uh, have. Uh, are so much lower and uh, my opponent as you can see just plays a lot lot of removals and they resolve uh, uh, they resolve the blood moon and i was really close to casting scion next turn i just need uh, six mana for it and binding uh, is dead Without the white mana, they go for again for scam grief. But uh, I did uh, find a fury attack with my cow, and uh, f uh, another fury in hand means that my opponent is a really bad position, and uh, they only have one black source themselves, and that was it. Okay, that was the game three. Was that I'm sorry? Okay, so uh, so thanks to thanks to Kao, uh, thanks to pl uh, for playing Kao in the deck. I'm able to keep this kind of hands. Uh, Kao lets you loot. Um, Kao lets you loot your uh, extra lands and. Uh, Draws you don't need like uh, footfalls when you draw them. When you when it's too late to cast them. Okay, so at this point, I just uh, decided to go for cow attack, uh, discard the footfalls rather than suspend it. I didn't feel it would be too useful, and uh, just having the two cows is insane here. I'm able to remove a one card from their graveyard, uh, putting them further from uh, Delirium, and uh, also uh, looting the card lands from my hand, and uh, that was it. My opponent uh, concedes. They were too far from Delirium to get rid of these cowls and especially the two extra Rhino tokens. Okay, so that was game, a very quick uh, game one. Uh, I was forced to mulligan to uh, six cards as the sign, uh, first hand was too light on removal. And uh, my lands weren't ideal. Again, unfortunately, I had Overgrown Tomb and the fetch in hand. The fetch that only gets me, uh, only gets me, uh, Sacred Foundry. But luckily, I uh, was able to find another fetch, which means next turn I can go heat into Basic Planes and be safe of, uh, be safe of the Blood Moon with the Binding in hand. Uh, Ragawan wasn't uh, wasn't easy to deal uh, in this game. Uh, 
I had uh, two solutions uh, for the next turn, but uh, not a lot uh, going on definitely. Uh, so I just went uh, for Kasali. My opponent uh, was uh, forced to counter this, so uh, I finally uh, get rid of this Ragaman, which already did uh, too much damage. Uh, I think uh, you can see during uh, all these games uh, there were just a lot of a lot of uh, times in the gameplay where uh, uh, where Kao was just uh, very good and uh, very desirable, and on many occasions it just uh, directly uh, won me uh, some of those games, and. Uh, This game was a uh, kind of close one, but my opponent uh, had the channeler, which uh, really smoothed their draws and uh, helped them finish the game quickly. They just uh, found everything perfectly thanks to the channeler, the explosives, the regent, and uh, that was it. Uh, It was time for uh, game three, uh, last match. Uh, I drew into decent, not the greatest, but decent hand capable with Sion. Turn two, uh, endurance. Turn three, no, uh, no cascade spells. But uh, thanks to Sion and endurance, I can uh, I can keep uh, this kind of hand and hope for a win. I needed a second green for endurance and I also had the force. I drew the forest. I will, uh, so I've just played uh, the heat so I can uh, get both uh, blue and uh, green mana if needed. And my opponent uh, didn't play anything and I decide it's best to go uh, with endurance this turn. Make them use the counter spell, which they did. They tapped out, which was a decent opportunity for me to play uh, another Scion. Attack with the first one, uh, hold the force of negation uh, for the next turn when I untap, and just putting my opponent to nine life with two Scions on the field. On the field, it's uh, very uh, awkward for them. It was the stalemate situation. At this point, they go for explosives, and I decided it's best to just uh, counter it because I have uh, rhinos on suspend. Uh, I decided uh, it's I tr I'll go for uh, the ice immediately. Try to try to resolve it, and my opponent. Uh, My opponent is forced to let the four damage through, and they stay back in in block. I didn't. But it's important. I think it it was important. I don't know what my opponent had in hand, but I think it's important. I didn't play the binding on their turn, but uh, I played it in my turn to play around the spell pierce. I only had two mana open. I didn't. I had a feeling my opponent has spell pierce because they had. Uh, they're just leaving these two cards in the hand until the end of the game. And uh, I played around uh, Spell Pierce all the time. So uh, I just definitely didn't want to, didn't want to waste that uh, uh, binding. And it wasn't necessary. Uh, I also drew into the Teferi. And that was it. Uh, that is the entire league. I really think uh, you can you could uh, during the league you could see some uh, pro pros to playing the cavo and the situations uh, where it was good and my logic behind uh, including cavo in this build it's also uh, a red card uh, that pitches to fury which I think it's also very important you can't uh, have that. Uh, uh, that low number of red cards with uh, four furies in the main, and uh, that's it. Uh, I 
the league previous to this one I went to 4-1 uh, with just one loss from Aspiring Spike Brew and the overall deck had felt uh, very good uh, very strong another strong version of the Rhino build and it's just uh, much trickier for your opponents uh, to play around uh, around this deck is so they just can't just think about the footfalls they can just hate you with uh one chalice a few cluster storms they never know when you're uh, when you will run into uh, and cascading the cabo instead of rhinos and make them uh make their cluster storm useless uh, so it uh, definitely i think uh, it definitely has uh its advantages uh, this build and uh, I'm still not sure totally about uh, all the minuses, but I think Kau is uh, the biggest one. Definitely is uh, cascading into Kau, where you just need that uh, trample damage to finish the game. But uh, in uh, the last uh, two leagues I played, that was just uh, very often relevant and. Uh, most often was just uh, resolving uh, end of turn any spell uh, with your uh, end of turn violent outburst. It, it just didn't matter if it was the Kabu or footfall. So the most important thing was to apply pressure to the opponent uh, by sticking uh, big uh, threats, uh, which is uh, unboltable, hard for them to deal with. Uh, which uh, Kao also loots cards from my hand, help me uh, dish those extra lands, uh, find something I um, need more like removal or another cascade spell. Uh, so I think it definitely has very good purpose and it's the only uh, two mana creature that uh, anybody could consider uh, to play in this kind of deck. It's because it offers some uh, card selection and uh, it's just a big body that uh, works well with the rest of your deck so okay that's it uh, uh, if you want to support the channel uh, subscribe uh, to the channel uh, hit like and uh, that's it there will be more uh, videos in the future in the very close future okay that's it for this time goodbye